I'm Nathan, and I'd rather be board gaming, and I'm so excited to bring something for you today. This monster of a box caught this on sale on Amazon, $45. Could not pass it up the very next day. It was back up to about $56. So, yeah, I had to get it. Going to do an unboxing. Check it out, and then we'll be doing a playthrough later on of the Solo Automa system. So, yeah, very excited. Let's take a look at what's inside. So I've seen other unboxings and playthroughs, and I'm sure you have, but we are going to do it again. It is such a really cool game, and here we go. Here is a very thick instruction manual. Lots of color pitch pages with arrows. That's, I, I really like that. Just from a quick glance of this, I am really liking the step-by-step walkthrough. Breakdown of everything. Yep, I'm liking it so far. Just, uh, it's a lot to it. But, with them being that thorough, there's probably less ambiguity and uncertainty when it comes to playing. So here's a quick reference guide. For the setup and combat and yeah that's cool that's really nice <laughs> a little achievements sheet so you can keep up with your high scores and such that's pretty cool and then here are the one player automa instructions and from what I've heard there are multiple levels of this you can play against one AI opponent or several and so you can choose the difficulty and even in a solo you can choose between uh, intermediate or difficulty or normal and hard or whatever you want to call it so yeah wow looks like I'm gonna have lots of reading to do okay a couple of punch outs we've got some coins Good markers. I'm not sure what all those are, but yeah. So let's take a look at one of those. And that's actually pretty good quality. If you can see that, uh, let me see if I can. There you go. So that's pretty thick. It's it's not it's not paper thin. It's not super thick, but it it's you know a good normal size. So they feel good not cheap there and they do uh, punch out pretty easily at least the ones I've punched out there so there we go here's the big board looks like bottom boards warp just a tiny bit but with such a big board and it folded this many times it's probably gonna happen oh my goodness I'm not gonna be able to fit this onto the camera so yeah oh the board itself is a puzzle and uh, it's a monster. They did give you plenty of bags. And this is common with modern games. This is a very inexpensive add-on that they can do to help improve the game. And then we have some. These are pretty cool. These little plastic bins here. So tokens that you're going to use frequently in the game, you can just put right there and then snap the lid on it so that they don't lose them anywhere. Here's the little <laughs> pins for the dials. Alright, so we've got I think these are like mission cards, quest cards, and then you have uh, probably Automa system there. Player board. This is their this is a player combat board. So put that together later. We'll take a look at some of this stuff again after we get it all put together. But and those are just falling out; they're punched very well. Then we have uh, combat cards here, I believe, and then some like achievement uh, cards there. And then here are some faction boards because we haven't even got to the coolest part yet. But these are really good. Has this is where you will set all your mechs and then your different abilities and such like that, and 
each one has its own special unique ability so that is awesome this is really cool okay as you can see this is really thick really thick and the reason is it's it's almost twice as thick as normal or as some of this other punch out stuff because it's notched so that when you put the cubes in there they stay in place which is such a simple solution that extra little effort it's awesome and then you have different places for tokens and you have different player boards for everyone so and you can see <clears throat> with the background art and the coloring for instance this build here it has one house and one coin symbol this one has one house and three coin symbols so each one of these boards itself is just a little bit different so that'll really increase the replayability if you want to mix, mix and match some of those with some of these uh, special player abilities so really cool all right <clears throat> Oops, it's not wanting to come out. Come on out of there. All right. So here are the little worker meeples in all the different colors. Here's like your victory stars and such like that. Different goods, the different buildings in the different colors, and then here's some goods here. So like food, oil drums, wood, and then of course the mechs. Let's take a closer look at the mechs. So there's this little plastic tray that helps hold them in and you can see some of mine came loose and got shifted around and shipping. It's not a huge deal. It's really not. They're, they're thick enough and sturdy enough that I think getting jostled around a little bit like that is not a big deal. <clears throat> but here's the player boards. So for instance the uh, Zara and Car, okay. So Bjorn and Mox, Oga and Changa, Anna and Woj, Wojtek and Wotek and Gunter, Nock and Tog. So here are, and these are pretty thick, even. Even her gun is not super bendy. If I can. Okay. So. Yeah, it's not too bad. <clears throat> nice, sturdy. Pretty good detail. Not bad. Not bad. You can even see the little uh, spike on his helm there. And I'm not a very good mini painter, but I still may have to give this a try just because these are so cool. Although the base is already painted just to help you distinguish. And yeah, her gun's not super bendy either, so that's good. There's her big bear. And. He's riding a bison. Now his gun is a little bent, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. Really cool. So for instance, this base is blue. Helps you know that these are his spider mechs. It looks like a ship. Almost like a pirate ship from the top with a cannon on it and then spider legs. It's pretty cool looking. Okay, here's the black mechs. These are like an old tank that lost its tracks and they put spider legs on it. That's a four legged instead of a six. And then this one has a small wheel in the back and a huge wheel up front with some legs. It looks a little crooked. I don't know if they're all that way or if maybe this one just got a little off. You can even see a hole here under its foot. So this one may just have been mismolded a little bit. Yeah, this one looks better. It's pretty cool. And these I like. These are these look like your traditional uh, war mech or mech warrior type. 
the bipedal with uh, cannons and such for arms. And then we have this one. And she does have like a panther with her or something like that. So I guess the claws kind of make sense. But this looks more like a bear up on its hind legs or something. So that's pretty cool. And once again, a little bendy but not not too bad so really cool looking pretty good quality uh, especially for the price I got it for I think this is excellent the detail is good um, I may have to watch up on some videos and get some ideas on a good way to paint these so there we go Okay, so I wanted to show you a few things. Uh, box has something in it. I uh, hope it's just dust and not mold or something. But um, got this put together. There's two of these: one for the attacker, one for the defender. And so you've got two faction pictures there. So they don't have one in the box for each faction, but I do believe you could get those separate if you want. And I decided to separate. I have tons of these little uh, cups sitting around. And so I decided to separate each coin into those for now. But the thing I wanted to talk about was these. These are very tightly wrapped. I had trouble. This one I've already been pulling on and getting started. And there is like a little hole here. But I'm afraid to, uh, I'm afraid to pull on that very much because... These are super, super thin, all of the cars. Now, they do have this little satin, vinyl feeling type of, uh, but they are so thin, so thin. And especially with these larger cards like that, I mean, that makes them even more flimsy feeling. They are very pretty. Very crisp and clean, although they do have colors all the way to the edge, so you'll have to, uh, on the backs, you'll have to be careful shuffling them. Okay. And then this deck of cards, I wish they had done this with all of the decks. They have the little uh, starter strip to get it open. I wish they had done that with all the decks. It's not a huge deal. It is a small nitpick, but the cards, I just, they are so thin, but they are good quality. Like I said, they have a light, a very fine uh, satin, vinyl, rigid like feel to them. It's very, very fine. Okay. And you can kind of hear them rubbing as I move them together. But the backs of them do have color all the way to the edge. So you will need to be careful shuffling them because they are paper thin. And uh, so that's a little sad. Okay, so while I was looking at the box or had it on the screen, we'll talk about it. The box is nice and thick. It is a great thick box. Okay, very sturdy. Okay, now I'm, I'm using quite a bit of force just to twist it around. The insert is nothing spectacular. It's just a paperboard, fold it up, give you two trenches. It does hold everything, uh, but especially with me using these little cups for the individual coins and stuff, it's going to start filling up real quick. So eventually in the future, I may have to do a box insert for this, and if I do, of course, I will show you that. But I did want to show you the box is nice and thick and uh, even shows you right here a good way to store everything. So that is pretty cool. Alright, let's take a quick look at this, just a player board. So here are some of the wooden pieces and you can tell they are nice and chunky these are just regular little cubes and but for instance it fits it's not super snug now this one's a little snugger because it's uh, just one cube slot 
okay and then these will go in here and that way if you bump it okay there's not a lot of slots so it's not a hard to remember everything where where everything was but here is a uh, one of the monuments you can build it's nice and chunky and there's a spot for it okay so pretty cool good quality here's your little player piece what your the action you're taking and then your workers now one thing they did not have to do is this right here they made all of the worker tokens let's see if I can get them in view for you unique for each faction like they're their own race or culture of people here we go so they're all just a little bit differently shaped okay that is pretty cool they did not have to do that especially since they already have the unique leader and uh, mech models so that is just an extra little feature that they added that is really cool and all of these came already pre-bagged so they they've already provided the bags to store these if you don't have a storage solution okay and all of the individual player color buildings are also uh, stored separately so until you come up with your own storage solution if you know they have all these bags but the this was a cool extra added little touch and I really had to show that off that's that's pretty neat I mean they could have these are all just generic little cylinders and cubes and your standard pawn they could have done that with the workers as well and just had a standard generic meeple shape and they didn't so had to show you that and I believe that's it for the those let's take a look at the board okay last thing I wanted to show you was the board now the way I have my camera mounted and set up above the board, I have it zoomed back as far as I can just to fit the board onto the table. Now, I haven't read cover to cover of the manual yet, but I have read the first few pages. I've gone through the different setups on, in both manuals, um, solo player and multiplayer, and I haven't found anywhere in here where it tells talks about the board, so I thought I would talk about that with you in case you were wondering. This is the board. This is the board you would use to, no matter the number of players. Okay, You have your different uh, prestige charts and achievements here, uh, things you've accomplished in the game, places for your decks. This is like your uh, strength, uh, war strength. So you have all these different places. And here's one of the cards I have here. Okay. Now, if I set it, here's a, here's a red hex. If I set it there across that, you can see the card is just barely bigger than the hex okay just barely longer so let me see I'm gonna zoom in if you'll just bear with me there we go so it's just barely bigger or longer than the width of the hex at its longest point okay so this is the standard side of the board now, if you flip the board over, I can't even get it onto my camera. I would have to have a totally different setup. This board is enormous. Okay. Now, I'll take this same card, and if you notice, it is swallowed now by the hex. Okay. It fits completely into a hex if you lay it that way. Okay, so here are your achievements, here are your uh, prestige, here is spots for the different decks, okay, and if you notice when I slide it over here, there is no, there is the edge, you can see the edge of the little um, eagle wing, there is no combat strength these hexes are not even in half this is like a third of the hex or a fourth okay so if I flip this back over all of this is missing 
from here over. Okay, so let's zoom back out. So basically from here over is missing. That is in case you want to buy, it is separate. They do sell it separate. You may even have seen it online. If you've been looking at this, it comes up as an optional buy. Board extender. That is what they're talking about. It's another piece of board that you slide right here. That is the large hex. So that when you start piling stuff on here and the board gets full and cramped and you're like, oh, I wish I had a little more space. You can use the other side of the board with the larger hexes and it would just extend off of that side of the board there. Okay. But if you don't have the table space or you're not concerned, then this is the side of the board you would use. All right. So there you go. There's all the components. <clears throat> like I said, the only really small nitpick I had was just how thin the cards were. Everything else in this has been amazing, even down to a nice thick box. So there you go. Um, hope you'll come back and check out. We'll do a, an Automa setup and playthrough, and I'll probably just randomly pick a board and a faction and, and see how it goes. All right. Thanks for watching. So one last note I wanted to talk about, I did find here on the back of the uh, manual, they talk about if you want a larger board that's 50, the spaces are 50% larger, the board's 50% larger, you can buy an extension and such. Um, all throughout the book, they have examples of how to do things, designer notes of why they did things, which is really awesome. I've read through the entire manual. They did a great job. The only thing I am concerned with on this game, here are your faction boards, and here are the player boards. And some of these top uh, order of operations, I guess, your abilities, they're in different orders and such. Uh, and if you notice, some of these cost a little more because this is the first player and this is the second player. Okay? And so some of these actions cost a little more. Now, what you're supposed to do is randomly mix these up and deal them out. Then whoever has the number one goes first and then you go clockwise. Well, in a two-player game, if you had a one and a five, see, this person would start with seven coins and four uh, fame or prestige and that's a huge difference and coins are your victory points in this game so maybe they have balanced it out with the cost of say the enlist here and the bill the deploy and such so I, I hope they balance that out well because they've done such a great job on everything else that I really hope it is balanced out because in a five player game if you were to deal these out what if you went first player fifth then the fourth player and then the third player and then the poor little second player ended up going last they have fewer resources than everyone else and this they said the reason they did that is say right in the manual is that the game ends immediately when the sixth star is placed and so the person that goes last might have fewer turns in the game and so they're given more resources to help them out. Well, this person would not have as many resources. I don't know. So that's a, that is a very, very, very small, minor nitpick at how impressed I am with everything so far. Just amazing. So that's the unboxing. And um, if you'd like to stick around, I'm going to pick a random faction and a random uh, player mat. And we will do a solo playthrough. Alright, thanks for watching.